So we talked about feedback uh, linearization and we learned that uh, feedback linearization is uh, a very powerful technique that can be utilized to design controllers for nonlinear systems. In our introductory lecture on feedback linearization, uh, we uh, learned that if uh, the system is in this particular format, we can obtain a feedback linearization of uh, that particular system. Uh, if the system is not in this form, we can define a state transformation that will bring uh, this, uh, the system into this form. Once we have the system in this form, then we can uh, design uh, an appropriate controller to obtain feedback linearization of the system. Uh, there were a few more uh, associated questions that uh, does there always exist uh, such a transformation? If it exists, then how to find that particular transformation? And uh, then we learned that there are two uh, very important uh, problems that is uh, full state linearization uh, and input output linearization. In full state linearization, we want all the state equations uh, to be linearized and in input output linearization, we want that the relation between input uh, and the output of the system, that relation is a linear relation. Uh, in uh, today's lecture, we shall uh, have a systematic study uh, of this thing, full state linearization. We have already covered the required uh, mathematical background. For that purpose, uh, we again consider a nonlinear system described by these equations, the state equations and output equations, where this uh, f of x, g of x and h of x are smooth functions uh, in this domain. And uh, we talk about single input, single output systems in this course. For uh, multi input, multi output systems, uh, you can uh, refer to the book by uh, Isidori. Uh, and uh, we, uh, already have, we are already familiar with the concept of relative degree, and relative degree is denoted by rho. So if a relative degree of a system comes out to be equal to n, that is uh, the dimensions of the state vector then we can utilize this state transformation and uh, where h of x is given over here the derivative of h of x along f of x we have already learned how to compute it and uh, we have already learned how to compute the higher order the derivatives uh, it has been uh, demonstrated that this state transformation is uh, a diffeomorphism what is a diffeomorphism we have already learned this concept. A state transformation will be a diffeomorphism if its inverse transformation exists and both the transformation and inverse transformation are uh, smooth uh, functions, vector, smooth vector functions. So it has been demonstrated that this state transformation is a valid state transformation that is it is a diffeomorphism. If we use uh, this state transformation then uh, this system uh, will be converted into this particular format uh, and uh, this format we call this one normal form and once we have normal form uh, we have already learned that we can obtain uh, full state linearization of this uh, particular system here these matrices ac bc cc these are given by these relations. This, uh, these, this is canonical form representation of chain of integrators. Uh, AC uh, has this particular structure, BC and CC. So this state transformation will bring this system into this normal form. And once we have this normal form, we can uh, obtain full state linearization. Before proceeding, uh, we want to uh, uh, prove uh, this statement that is this state transformation will bring this system into this particular form. This uh, proof is uh, simple. Uh, what do we mean by relative degree rho equal to n? If relative degree is equal to n then these expressions are satisfied. This is uh, from the definition of relative degree uh, where we have studied relative degree we have learned these two uh, things. Uh, this is the state transformation which we defined on the previous slide and uh, from this uh, state transformation what we see is that 
z1 that is the first element of this new state vector that is equal to h of x and the derivative of uh, z1 with respect to time that is given over here it is equal to a derivative of this thing with respect to x and then derivative of x with respect to time so derivative with respect to time is uh, we are always uh, denoting it by this uh, notation where x dot itself what is that that uh, is equal to uh, f of x plus g of x into u so multiplying these things uh, this uh, this term multiplied with this one that is nothing but the derivative of h of x along uh, f of x and this is uh, this multiplied with uh, this one is uh, lg h of x so if a uh, relative degree of this system is equal to n that means that this thing will be equal to zero this thing that is uh, for i equal to uh, one uh, this is lg h of x if relative degree is n lg h of x will be equal to zero and uh, hence uh, uh, this thing that one dot is equal to lf h of x where lf h of x is the second element of this transformation matrix uh, in, not matrix this uh, transformation uh, uh, this state transformation vector so this uh, lf h of x is equal to z2 it is equal to z2 and what is z2 dot z2 dot uh, z2 is uh, this thing lf h of x is z2 and z2 dot is the partial derivative of this thing with respect to x and then the derivative of x with respect to time where x dot itself is equal to f of x plus g of x multiplied by u so this thing uh, multiplied by this thing what is that lf square h of x and the second term is lg lf h of x so again if a relative degree is equal to n uh, this thing will be equal to zero uh, because uh, if uh, we take uh, i to be equal to 2 so this uh, thing will be equal to uh, 0 so this term is 0 therefore z2 dot is equal to lf uh, square h of x where this is equal to from here uh, this is third entry over here so that is equal to z3 and uh, similarly we continue uh, this thing uh, and zn minus 1 uh, dot that is equal to if we extend the same thing and uh, by similar uh, things so instead of uh, here lf uh, square it should be lfn minus 1 and uh, here lg instead of uh, lf it is uh, lfn minus 1 uh, h of x uh, it should be n minus 1 or n minus 2 it must be I think n minus 2 here it is uh, 2 and uh, whatever is the subscript over here the same is uh, here so n minus 1 is subscript over here the same thing is over here and here is uh, uh, 2 minus 1 so subscript minus 1 so subscript minus 1 so it it should be n minus 2 over here it is by mistake so this thing is uh, this thing will be equal to 0 because of the definition of relative degree and uh, this thing is equal to zn from this expression and uh, if we continue what is zn dot by similar reasoning uh, this is equal to lfn h of x plus lg lf n minus 1 h of x here it is correctly written uh, and now what is this thing this is not equal to 0 because relative degree is equal to n so this is not equal to 0 uh, therefore the system can be uh, rewritten in new state uh, variables in this form z1 dot is equal to z2 
this is first equation the second equation z2 dot is equal to z3 z2 dot is equal to z3 zn minus 1 dot is equal to zn and zn dot is equal to this expression this one and uh, uh, we can further uh, rewrite this expression in matrix form so z1 dot z2 dot up to zn dot and here this vector so you see that this uh, first equation is uh, the same over here z1 dot is equal to z2 uh, plus 0 multiplied by this thing so you have uh, written the same uh, equation over here z2 dot is equal to z3 and so on and uh, the last equation is uh, zn dot is equal to 1 multiplied by this expression uh, over here we have only taken this uh, l g l f n minus 1 uh, h of x uh, common and here uh, we are left with the u and uh, uh, this term is divided by this thing we have taken this uh, common from both the expressions and this is uh, some another function of x we call it gamma of x and this is some function of uh, x we call it alpha of x and uh, therefore uh, this matrix is the same as uh, matrix AC uh, this is the same as uh, matrix BC uh, so Z dot is equal to AC Z plus BC gamma of X U minus alpha of X so we have demonstrated that that particular transformation will convert the system into normal form once we have this normal form then you already know that we can define this uh, control law uh, to get uh, the uh, linear uh, linearized version of this system you see that this alpha of x will be cancelled with this alpha of x and this gamma inverse will be cancelled with uh, this uh, gamma and you will have this linear representation of the nonlinear system once you have this linear system then you can uh, apply the linear control techniques to design uh, a controller for this particular system the one with which you are more uh, familiar is the state feedback control uh, with the state feedback control uh, you take this control law v v is the new control input v is equal to minus k uh, where k is uh, some matrix multiplied by the new state variable with this control law the closed loop system is given by this expression and how do we uh, design this uh, matrix uh, k we uh, select this matrix k such that this matrix a minus b k is Hurwitz or uh, that is closed loop system is uh, stable and uh, you have learned many different techniques uh, to uh, design uh, this uh, uh, gain matrix and uh, the overall control law uh, is given by this expression uh, u is equal to alpha of x plus gamma inverse we have uh, already uh, denoted this gamma inverse with beta and uh, v is equal to minus kz so this is the overall control law which uh, will result into stabilization of uh, the nonlinear system so any question up to this point uh, yes you are right uh, this should be positive sign here and uh, the negative of this one uh, the negative of this one we we shall call that uh, thing to be alpha of x so alpha of x uh, here uh, that is the negative of this so here is positive sign right you are right